JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 16th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I, will talk about, uh, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against most of the other major currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday. It gained versus CAD, AUD, NZD, and GBP in that order, while it underperformed slightly against CHF, JPY, and the Euro. The relative strength of the US dollar and the other safe havens, uh, Yen and Franc, combined with the weakening of the risk linked Aussie, Kiwi, and Looney, suggests that the market participants switched to risk off uh, yesterday and today in Asia. Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that most major EU indices traded in the green, with the, L with the only exceptions being Italy's food CMIB and Spain's IBEX 35. However, market sentiment weakened uh, during the US session and continued on a weak note during the Asian session today as well. The only gainer was South Korea's KOSPI. On Monday, we saw investors pushing equities higher with the S&P 500 and Nasdaq hitting fresh record highs despite the Fed decision drawing closer. However, it seems that just the day ahead of the outcome, they decided to reduce their risk, exp their risk exposure and decide how to, uh, to move forward uh, in the aftermath of uh, the gathering. As we already noted, the attention will fall on whether there will be any discussion with regards to a potential quantitative easing tapering. Last week's inflation data revealed that despite the acceleration in both headline and core terms, there were hefty contributions uh, to that from short-term increases in airline ticket prices and used cars, which supports the fact uh, that the latest inflation spike may indeed be due to transitory factors. However, Ahead of the data, we heard several Fed policymakers expressing their desire to discuss quanti quantitative easing tapering at one of the upcoming meetings. So with all that in mind, we don't expect officials to rush into taking any policy action today, and thus we will scan the statement for any potential discussion on uh, quantitative easing. If there is indeed such a discussion, we believe that what could determine the market's uh, reaction may be any hints over a potential desired pace of withdrawal. A fast pace may suggest that Fed officials do not see the surge in inflation as transitory as they did in the past and may hurt equities. At the same time, the US dollar uh, and other safe havens could come under uh, some buying interest. Now, on the other hand, any discussion suggesting that uh, the time for scaling back monetary policy has not come yet or anything pointing to a very slow pace of tightening may encourage market participants to increase their risk, ex their risk exposure a bit more. Now let's not forget though that uh, we also get updated economic projections as well as a new dot plot. Back in March, the median dots suggested that interest rates are likely to stay at present levels even in 2023. However, looking at the details, four members voted for hikes in 2022 and seven, member and seven members saw rates higher in 2023. Therefore, combined with a potential discussion over a faster than previously expected tapering process, more members voting for hikes in 2022 and 2023 could hurt uh, risk sentiment uh, even more. The opposite may be true if the new dog plot is more or less a mirror image of the previous one. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the European session, we already got the UK CPIs for May. Both the headline and core rates rose by more than anticipated, but the pound added only around 10 pips against its US counterpart after the release. This confirms our view that accelerating inflation is unlikely to spark speculation for more action by the Bank of England at its upcoming gathering. 
In our UGB P traders are likely to stay focused on the coronavirus saga and the rising cases in the UK due to the Delta variant, which prompted Prime Minister Johnson to delay the reopening of the economy by a month. We get more CPIs for May later in the day, this time from Canada. The headline CPI is anticipated to have ticked up to 3.5 from 3.4% year over year, while no forecast is available for the core rate. Last week, the Bank of Canada kept its policy unchanged and noted that any adjustments to the pace of their quantitative, of their quantitative easing purchases will be guided by the ongoing assessment of the strength and durability of the economic recovery. Although the bank scaled back its, mod, its um, bond purchases at the gathering before that, we now believe that inflation may need to decently overshoot its uh, forecasts for market participants to start discounting the chance for further tapering taking place soon. In the US, apart from the Fed decision, building permits and housing starts for May are also due to be released, and expectations are for both to have increased somewhat. As for the speakers, besides uh, Fed Chair Powell, who will speak at a press conference after the Fed decision, we will also get to hear from ECB Vice President Luis de Guindos and ECB Executive Board Member Frank Elderson. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of uh, the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. So goodbye, have a nice day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.